Hello and a warm welcome to AD4 News Update, coming to you live from Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital. I am Merciful Ajinamo. Former Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Mohammed Adoke, has arrived in Nigeria from Dubai. The ex-Attorney General of the Federation left Dubai following pressure from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The EFCC boss, Ibrahim Agu, and Dubai authorities have held a series of meetings in respect of the former Attorney General. He was accompanied by Interpol officers on Emirates Airlines Flight 785. The Executive Secretary of the Tertiary Education Trust Fund, Professor Suleiman Elias Bogoro, on Thursday in Abuja, Nigeria's capital, was presented with the interim report of the Ad Hoc Committee to deepen the research and development mandate of TETFUND. Professor Bogoro, who believes in the ultimate drive of TETFUND to deepen research and development that would advance the knowledge-based economy of the country, said it is a stepping stone for Nigeria to compete with the world-leading economies in the 21st century. The report had an 18-man ad hoc committee and was co-chaired by Placid Unjoku, a professor, and Tope Togun of the Nigerian Economic Summit. I make bold to say that without a robust research, development, and innovation agenda, we are not going to get there. We'd like to confirm that as a committee, we reviewed the R&D delivery systems of TED Fund. That's what TED Fund is doing. We reviewed the national research and development ecosystem and we took understanding the structure for effective and efficient research administration. I took about 45 minutes to browse this document and I was smiling from page one to the end because they did an excellent job. Um, they did something they made sure they captured what they call my vision about R&D. For too long, Tetfan had been associated with building classrooms, lab libraries, um, offices, laboratories, lecture halls, lecture theaters, call it, academic staff training, manuscript development, Journals support professional and institution based academic journals, those categories, as well as promoting entrepreneurship through NUC, as it were, providing funding for fabrication in our polytechnics and all those. If re the purpose of research does not have a lining of innovation, then you are not adding value. There's no creativity. There's no deep thinking that brings new outcomes. If you are doing that in research, it is perfunctory research. Nigeria could not go forward and be competitive with perfunctory research. We got to do what I call problem-solving research for, the, for technology, for the economy, and for society. In a similar vein, the Tertiary Education Trust Fund held a press briefing at its headquarters on Thursday in Abuja, Nigeria's capital. The Executive Secretary, Ted Fund, Professor Suleiman Elias Bogoro, highlighted the achievement of the organization since his reinstatement into office on 21st January 2019 till date. He said that Ted Fund will continue to do the needful in interventions as well as deepening research and development to the growth of the nation. He further stressed that individuals who indulge in malpractices will however be sanctioned as this would stand as warning to erring institutions. He acknowledged the members of the press for relentlessly complying in reporting issues about Ted Fund. Since my return on 21st of January, my gracious return to office courtesy of Mr. President. I, I met in Tetfan some situations that were pretty difficult for me to proceed smoothly regarding policies and the most staring of all of them was the issue of uh, what has become ignobly the so-called stranded scholar issue. 
it set me making an aspect that ordinarily wouldn't be a priority, the very first priority as I return. We're hoping that through the R&D Standing Committee will increase the awareness for the need to synergize, both within science, technology, disciplines, as well as uh, the social sciences that are required to define even the quality and uh, methods of governance, uh, which has been a major weakness for our country. If my, this, my staff in Tetfon engage in infractions, I never allow it. I cannot allow either lecturers or heads of institutions, as it were, VCs, rectors, provosts, to encourage or go into collusion and I'm told that sometimes it's like they take the monies and they go and share it with some, some persons within the institution. Well, I'm not going to call names at this point. But you will appreciate that it made a very strong case for malpractices. These are unacceptable. Now that we are, we are being informed, I promise that we will proceed to take action. Gentlemen of the press, thank you very much and thank you for the great job of uh, reporting what we've been doing out there. No fewer than 4,370 houses have been destroyed and 51,000 people displaced as flood ravaged 212 communities in Cross River State, Nigeria. This was disclosed by the Director General of the State Emergency Management Agency, Princeville IM, in Calabar, South South Nigeria. They said that the incident occurred between July and September, adding that measures have been taken to provide succor to the victims. According to the Director General, the incident brought untold hardship to the victims as they had to abandon their homes for safety. A professor of pediatric dentistry at the Department of Child Dental Health, Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, Oshun State, Nigeria, said prolonged breastfeeding can cause dental caries in children. Professor Mureni Keupang made this known in a chat with newsmen on the sideline of the 2019 National Oral Health Week on Wednesday in Abuja, Nigeria. According to her, dental caries, also known as tooth decay, is a breakdown of teeth due to acid caused by bacteria. She said that evidence suggests that when children are breastfed for more than two years, there is a great risk of them having caries. Ukwang emphasized the need to sensitize mothers on the negative implications of prolonged breastfeeding. It has become a norm that in the spirit of Yuletide and at the end of each year, people make plans towards spending quality time with friends and families. Some engage in business activities like buying and selling, while others travel within and outside the country for the holiday. However, in recent times, it has been observed that during festivities, there is usually a hike in transportation fares. 84 TV radio paid a visit to Jabi Motor Park in Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital, to have travelers and drivers react to this and also share with us reasons for the hike in transportation fares during festivities. I was told it's going to be 1.5 when I get here, but I actually thought it was going to be more than 2,000. It's 2,000 now. For the transportation, is 1,500 Naira. By, that is the price before, but now that's increased to 2,000 Naira, and that is, to me, it's a, it's a slap on those that don't really have money to travel. On Tuesday, I came from Lagos down to Abuja, so the, the transportation was 10K, and by last week, it was around 7K. By this time last year, we increased transport to 2,500, but now it's 2,000. This morning, they just increased to 2,000 from 1,500. Why? Because most of the time, when they load go now, they will not carry anything come back. They have to follow the entry to here. So at least they will get some change to cover the fuel where they are coming back on their dropping the passenger for Christmas. That's it, an 84 News update coming to you live from Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital. You can join the conversation on our website at www.84tvradio.com. You can like and subscribe to our YouTube page at 84 TV Radio. And don't forget to follow us on our social media handles at 84 TV Radio on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Many thanks for watching. I am Merciful Ajinomo.